This week's episode is sponsored by White's Beaconsfield. White's Beaconsfield is the number one company in the UK to brighten up your smile at a very affordable price. Get your perfect smile today using code AGJAMESENGLISH at checkout for a 15% discount on all products. from White's Beckinsfield. I'm on day five out of seven and my teeth are looking white. So it doesn't contain peroxide, so it's very, very safe for you to use on your teeth. It doesn't cause any sensitivity and I've literally got the most sensitive teeth. The most affordable product, works like a dream. Look how white, with no filter, no sensitivity, and it is just one of the best that I've ever used. Right, that's three days, it's crazy. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. In institutions, I've had one Christmas in 37 years and since I was 12, which is how many is 43. So you've got to see that out of 43, I would have had to have spent... 40 or 39, 40 in custody Sick, you know I mean? in an institution of some kind. It's always a bit hurtful for me to to go over this, but I think you know it's time that the public public knows exactly what um, you know abuse is and the effects that it can have on you. I don't think you're gonna like hearing this, but I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you because um, you know I want people to know. I haven't got no shame and guilt no more. What was your biggest turn you ever done outside? Oh yeah, the print, the out near opposite the Albert Hall. Yeah, was that a million quid? It's worth. Mm, yeah, the whole crowd's watching, and I've put one, and then it was bending the tool. It wasn't the best one. So while I had him like that, I put that one back in my pocket and pulled out the other one. A good one. A bigger one, James. Sadly, and. Uh, because I was, I was hurt. So that's the realities of prison. This is what happens day to day. Boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Yami B. How are you, brother? Big up, big man James. Good Sweet to see boy. you. And you too, boy. What do you want me to call you today? Yami, Samuel? Um, which one do you want? Both. Both. Yeah. We, we can do that. So it's two different kinds of characters. Samson and Yami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a man who's from London. Yeah. Spent nearly 50 years in prison. Yeah, institutions. You know a lot yeah. of big hitters, people that's been on here as well. Yeah. You're out now, the longest you've ever been out. Yeah. Doing well, I'm proud of you. Yeah. It's great to see you. Yeah. We spoke a few times now. Yeah. Getting a laugh. Yeah, James. First of all, how are you? I'm in a real good place and I have been month by month. I just seem to be getting better and better spiritually, mentally, because you know I'm like a, a a kid, really relearning stuff. I'm good at all the big things, but the little things, I'm falling short on a little bit that I have to do for a longer period of time before I get full adjustment. But I'm not rushing, and um, I'm just looking forward. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do is look forward to life. Mm. I always go back to the start with my guest brother. Yeah, where you grew up and how it all began. Bow Road. I think it was the last time the bow bells rang, right? And um, didn't stay long and moved to West London about one or two. Um, my earliest memory was being in foster care because my dad apparently stabbed my mum and ended up in Brixton prison, right? So I was in foster care, I think, for 
nine months or something and then he came back out and we moved to West London which would have been Labyrinth Grove. So you were in the system for a very young age? Well, yeah. My memories of that. Apparently, my older sister used to tell me that um, I used to get unnecessary smacks from um, the foster the foster woman. But I was thinking, how could she remember that? But anyway, yeah, from from that, Labyrinth Grove, uh, yeah, I was in the heart of it. I went, got my schooling down there. It wasn't really a happy home, to be honest. I, I can't really look back um, on too many fond memories. We used to go on holidays to Butlins, Barry Island, which is in Wales. My mum was from Newport Gwent. My father was Indian. And uh, I quickly identified in where I was living that, you know, from an early age, I wanted to be black. And uh, I started, you know, uh, mixing in and I always used to hate, hate my colour. And um, yeah, it was starting from there. I was always, even before I went into care, I was always the little one that everybody would say, do, do that, do this, do that. So that wasn't just because of going into care, I don't think. I think I always had that um, that people pleasing thing to some degree, but obviously we was, oh, I was a child then. But no, 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 no real memories up until we moved from Labyrinth Grove to Listen Green Estate, which is near the Edgeware Road, which is Northwest State. And we got to Listen Green when I was about seven or eight. We used to do the normal things that kids do, run outs and whatnot. But there always seemed to be problems with mum and dad. My dad never really used to say much. Now, proud, proud Indian man who never really spoke to anyone. My mum was more, you know, like me and you, if you like, James. We talked to mm. everybody. And um, quite early, I used to notice that he used to hit her. And it always used to be at certain times at night. Drinking? No, no. It was a, there was a hidden secret but um, that I didn't know uh, in them early days. And, um, you know, that started very rarely at first that I used to cotton on. But, you know, being a mummy's boy, I always used to want to protect my mum. So no stealing, no getting into trouble. Um, schooling, all right. Good at English, good at maths and things like that. And um, yeah, once we got to listen green, things just changed. He, he was hitting her at night and I was getting up in the night, waiting for the nighttime call because it was always a certain time that I would hear her crying in the bedroom and then I would just open the door and go in there and then get a beating off, beating off my father with a slipper or the belt because obviously um, he was upset that I was trying to protect mum but yeah that developed uh, for a little while I was finding it hard to go to school and things like that I felt like the only one in school that was in care them days oh no sorry this is before care yeah sorry 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 James yeah so the build up leading towards care um, it's always a bit hurtful for me to to go over this but I think you know it's time that the public public knows exactly what um you know, abuses and the effects that it can have on you in later life. But but anyway, yeah, we went on holiday. They were falling out. He was hitting her a lot. I was crying at school. And uh, we went on a trip to Barry Island with my godfather, Mr. Hall, who was like a carer for us, a mum, uh, a man from Hull, lovely, lovely man. And um, we went there first. Mum and dad were trying to put, patch up their differences and came about two days later. And, but they started fighting whilst we were on holiday for that week. So they decided to go back early so as not to affect our holiday. And um, it was on the way back that my dad had a stroke while he was driving. And obviously the ambulance had to come and you know it was touch and go whether he was gonna live and all that. We got the news while still at Barry Island and then we got the news that my mum had taken an overdose and that was around about a nine and ten year old mark and when we came back with Mr Hall there was no one in the house to look after us apart from Mr Hall so I went to the hospital with my sisters but I was more concerned with my mum. Did she try to commit suicide? It, it, it probably felt like it 
um, big man. But, um, you know, that I was staring. I'll never forget the feeling I had. Like, I didn't mind if my dad died. And I was more concerned, like, crying because my mum was, you know, in intensive care and whatnot. And I, I remember just thinking to myself, I hope my mum lives and I hope that he dies kind of thing. Mm. It was really quite deep. But um, after a few days of them being in hospital... Um, sorry, James. That's OK, but you know, I'll take your time. After a few days of being in hospital, um, the social services came round to the house and we were there was pulling and shoving everywhere because obviously we had, we it's been someone signed over. I can't remember which one it who signed over the the care order to go into there, but um, I'd never forget the screaming. The neighbours were in. There was a lot of crying, you know, and uh, but we had to go. And we was all in our pajamas and nighties, the three of us. And we went in a car. I never forget cold, cold night, James. And uh, you're standing on the doorstep outside a children's home. And um, you know, waiting for the door, not knowing what to expect. First time you've left, you know, your home with your mother. And the door opens, and they invite you in and try and make you feel as secure as possible. And that was my first taste of institutions. How old were you? About nine or ten. So still only a young boy. Yeah. To then get took away from your parents and then getting put into yeah. a home. Yeah. And then, I know we spoke earlier, but what age? You were getting abused in there sexually? Yeah, I'm afraid so, uh, big man. Um, from ten to twelve, right? So I'm in the office. I'm sitting in the chair. Right, um, a lady is there, a nice member of staff. Right, says to me, "It's about time that you learn about the birds and the bees." And um, I said, "Oh, what do you mean?" She goes, "Uh, you know, you you got to understand that you know you're going to develop and change soon, and maybe you need someone to talk to." And I said, well, "Who?" She goes, "Oh, I've already spoken to the manager, and he will help you with this." because you've got no father figure there. So I agreed. And slowly but surely, James, I don't think you're gonna like hearing this, but I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you because um, you know, I want people to know I haven't got no shame and guilt no more. <clears throat> and it's my story and you know, I wanna shed light on a lot of the stuff that's coming out now that's related to the seventies and all the things that were swept under the carpet. So it started that way, and once a week, twice a week, you know, you come out of the bath, he wants to dry you down, do all that kind of, that nasty stuff, and then quite quickly I thought something was wrong, you know, with the, the fiddling about, oh, you haven't developed um, pubic hair yet, da 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 But anyway, big man, it got more, more, more serious, right? He um, started to come, in, come into the room at night, Right, so it was that same time at nine o'clock and the fear and the anxiety that I used to feel when he used to come into that room because it always be around about the same time while the other children are, are sleeping. And um, I could feel my face going red, with, you know, like when you're trying to pretend you're asleep so he doesn't come in and, and touch you and, 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 and take liberties, uh, big man. Uh, but sometimes, you know, he used to catch me on the and come and, you know, I found it very difficult to resist and say, no, I, you know, I didn't really know any better, but I knew there was something wrong. And then there was, you know, walking down the fire exit, walking down the fire exit too, because his flat was on the premises and they walked me down and says, oh, maybe you should come and stay down in my room. And on that one time I, I, I showed uncomfortability and he panicked and then brought me back up. But, you know, the abuse continued and got worse and worse. And then, um, as well as that, it's very important for the public to know that, you know, like when you go to school and you've got to do the school report and your parents come to see how all the, how you're doing in all the classes and it happened, used to happen once a year. Uh, he used to come there as my, my guardian and like be a pretend father, if you like. And... Um, I always remember standing there, I didn't like talking to the tutors. It was like, 
standing there and thinking they don't know. And I used to want to resist going into, because I didn't want to be in his presence and that, um, James. And the other time I was a, a nippy footballer, both footed, a bit messy like when I was smaller, you know, really, really jinky. And uh, I was on Watford's books. I was playing the same forward line as Mark Steen and Richard Cadet. And, you know, I got, I got there, Wally Downs was the scout back then. And um, he, we'd, I'd done a couple of training sessions with him. And I was playing also for Barnet District, which would have been on Sunday league, as well as the school team, which was um, Saturdays, I think. So all these football things were happening, even though I was very small for my age. And one time, I only thought about this the other day, um, James, uh, they never had a referee on a Sunday league, but that man was from Plymouth and he was a football referee. Interesting, uh, when I look back now, uh, some of the other stuff I'm gonna touch on, but my manager said, oh yeah, but your guardian, he's a referee, do you wanna get him? But I didn't wanna get him. So they phoned the children's home on that day because there was no referee mm -hmm. and he came to referee. But I'll never forget it because every time I got the ball and I was chopped down, he used to, blow up for a foul for the other way. So I remember after the game, he used to say to me, oh, you'll never be, be anything. So I, you, I, if anything, I was losing my confidence. Yeah, it was breaking But he was breaking me down. Yeah, not too bad, I know, I know, yeah. I know. It's things like that that you remember. Um, the referee and the school report, you know, it was like the boogeyman coming in at night. Yeah. I used to lie there thinking and then I wouldn't want to go into school. And then after a year or so, James, um, I was with another person in the children's home and I told them, and they said, you've got to tell the deputy. So the deputy's flat was on the premises as well. So we gone into her flat, lovely, lovely lady, was deeply disturbed when I told her and I thought she believed me and I think she did. So when I told her, there's obviously a big thing now coming out. He's not coming out of his flat because there's got to be a hearing at Westminster Social Services ran a big table. Uh, I remember the names of the people there, funny enough. I thought about it the other day and I remembered, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna say nothing here, um, big man. Uh, and I sat around the table and all of them were writing, everything I said down and they said, I could see by the body language that, you know, they had the pen and they were sitting there and he, and he was tapping like that, like he was saying, I don't really want to do all this. So I got the feeling, even though I was so young at 12, that they weren't interested. So I was feeling that at that young age. So I've gone back to the children's home. He come out one morning in dark glasses and not showing his eyes. And another member of staff said, that's down to you, that is. You know, he's not, he doesn't want to come out and work at the moment until all this thing has been sorted out. So they made me feel like a liar as well. Yeah, that's the scary thing. That anybody that doesn't take an interest in a kid telling you that they've been abused is probably a paedophile themselves. Yeah. And it's so scary. The amount of people that have come on here that have been in prison or had addiction issues have been abused or at some stage in yeah. their life. It's Because your life for the get-go has been in a household full of anger, frustration, yeah. tense all the time and then getting part and then going through the children's home listen, brother, for even opening up and speaking your story for other people watching. It gives other people hope. What home was this? That was Portishead House, mm -hmm. Brunel Estate, still there today. And this guy's still living? Um Do you know? Dunno, know. if he would have been about forty, fifty and I was twelve then unlikely. Yeah probably ended up it wasn't you know like with all the knowledge that I've got now especially with you know all the stuff that's coming out from the 70s where we know already it was swept under the carpet um they must have gone on to commit other crimes or you know they were breeding grounds now I realize children's own schools yeah football you would have been the only one I think if he's working in a children's school vulnerable kids it's a prime target for paedophiles to work because if people like yourself are going and telling your story, they're going to believe you and then going and work with the school boys and yeah. football and stuff. People need to be vetted more. They need yeah. to be, get background checks yeah. to understand. But again, there's so many people in higher powers that 
are controlling this shit and it's fucking so scary the amount of vulnerable kids that are getting took away abused even killed yeah do you know what I mean which is why I'm going to be a, a great campaigner for Save Our Children yeah, I've right. already got Fair context play, but, but James you know what let's get it out of the way because uh, you know it's, it's I I want to I want to let it all out and um, that geezer the tall one he was like six foot four or five the bastard was you know, six foot, six foot odd. So not seeing him for a couple of days, not wanting to sit at a dinner table because they're making me feel like, oh, look what you've done to one of us kind of thing. And one morning I didn't want to go to school. So I had my Leeds United bag on my shoulder and um, I said, no, I'm not going. Because every time I kept going into school, I, I kept crying. So anyway, that morning, he said, oh, you're going to school. And I said, no, I ain't. And um, he lifted me up out of the chair, opened um, the front door, had me in one hand, opened the door with the other, and basically dropped me on the balcony outside. And I remember falling, and I remember all the other kids were getting ready to school. They were laughing. But on this day, um, James, I weren't having it. I said, all right. So I went into the school bag, got the little compass out that you used to draw circles with, the metal one with the little pin at the end, and I pressed the doorbell, and he come rushing out like he was going to do something to me again, and I run straight at him and poked him, you know, numerous times and that, you know, and uh, somehow I got back out there because he fell down onto the chair, so I got back out, and that was the first time I noticed adrenaline. So you plugged him? I pl- I've done yeah. him. I've done him, I've done him, I've done him. Yeah, but it. James, it was the feeling of the adrenaline, mm. that that high adrenaline that I got when I jumped on the school bus. Yeah. I never forget, I was thinking, see, I can fight back. Yeah. And that was that 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 so was it. That could have potentially been up to 11, 12, 13 years of build up of being scared, vulnerable, accepting yeah. nasty shit yeah. to then exploding. Was that the start of... The violence that you went down? Yeah. But Were you violent before that? I was a little sweet boy. Everyone used to protect me. I was too little and too cute <laughs> to get into any fight. Everybody would protect yeah. me. So I never really, you know, people could say things to me and then you jump in for me. Mm-hmm. I'd say, leave him alone, you know. A lot of them were ladies, actually, that stuck up for me. A lot of people's mums. There was a little bit of love. You know, with dinner, come round, bring, bring little Sammy round, let him eat some proper food and that. People's... You know, Jamaican, St. Lucian, Dominican, mm-hmm. you know, lovely, lovely parents for some of those kids that I was going to school with yeah. or being around the estate. But um, I had some good friends in that estate as well you know, that I used to play football with because we had the five-a-side um, complex across the road. And that I looked back the other day and I remembered I'd been getting um, friend requests from, from back then that I thought I'd never see some of these, mm-hmm. these guys in the estate. A lot of them were upset about seeing obviously the Atwood show and seeing me go on there because you know they've they lost me hundreds of years ago yeah and um they came to get me in the school James right Mm -hmm. and they come into the classroom the police and said yeah so is this after you've done him this is after I've done him right so they brought me to Harrow Road police station and I sat there and Mr Hall came the great godfather the war two veteran Right, lovely, lovely man, James. Did everything for me, you know, in them early days when I was when I was down, really. And um, he said to me, "Don't admit to nothing." He told me, and I still had the social worker there saying, "Look, the best thing to do is thing." So in the morning, juvenile court, and he's in the court with me as my you know guardian looking out because obviously mum and dad weren't allowed no contact with them after everything that happened at home during that stage because you've got to remember my mum was an alcoholic after us going into care remember I used to have to sneak out the window of the children's home to go searching over Bayswater to see if she comes out the pubs and then walk home all alone because I did love my mum and I didn't like people taking liberties with her because she was really soft and when she drank it was that kind of thing but I never got to saw her I think they always used to tell her I'm outside and she used to go out the back way Mm-hmm. But you try to still protect her. But you know the the God thing, 
uh, James was there from early on. I remember I used to walk all the way back to the children's home, my little hideout with the window to get back in. And one night I got back to the hideout because I used to use the mat to hold the door open mm-hmm. so that it didn't close because it was one of those doors if you shut it, yeah. it just, but on this night I come you back. You couldn't get back in. I couldn't get back in. So this bastard grounded me, right? So this is before the stabbing, build up to the mm-hmm. stabbing now. And yeah, I'm in the courtroom, I'm crying. They're, they're, you know, they're saying, oh, you've got to go to Stamford House Secure Unit, which is on Goldhawk Road, Shepherd's Bush. And that was my first taste of, of, real, of prison because you're not allowed to, to leave there or nothing. Mm. It's like a, a, a prison, but a schoolboy prison. Yeah. And people like Chris Eubank were there. How was Chris? He protected me. Yeah. I liked him. Mm-hmm. He's always laughed when he used to see me because I was so small because we used to go on the football pitch and Mr. Simons, he was there. And even they, they, they wanted me to play for their, for their team as well. But yeah, three months there, a bit of a cry baby because there was all other little children there that were in for burglaries and robberies early on. And I was only in, I, well, not only in, but I was in for, for such a thing, but I never really used to talk about the crime. I didn't, didn't really want no one to know about it. And it's funny, the, the, he died, the geezer, later on, a few weeks from, from a head injury or something. Mm-hmm. I remember his name, but um, not because of me, but mm. you know, he died. But obviously, the, he's an abuser as well because he attacked me and threw me out the, the thing. He might have been not the one that was doing stuff to me. But, you know, I got to Stanford House and, you know, my first taste, but I was weak then, small. I tried to run away a couple of times. They put me in this little block thing because they had those little, like a wooden bed, but it was like a cell door. Mm-hmm. That's like at 12, 13, um, James. And then... They said, oh, we're not going to send you to an approved school this time. We're going to send you to another children's home. And I was over the moon because I was too scared to go to an approved school. But I got a children's home in Mozart State. And it, the school wouldn't have me back. So I lost out on that. I just like to mention my school teacher who everybody was scared of, Miss Harding, an old lady. Everybody was frightened of her. Uh, she used to always come to the children's home on Easter and Christmas and bring me presents with her uh, army husband. And I used to think she was a bad woman, but I realise now in later life that really she felt what I couldn't see. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? And yeah. uh, that's another angel that I look at that I didn't see then. I used to hide when she used to come because she weren't my mum. I used to think, oh, I don't want her to come. But you'd have been scared of any adult at that time that you weren't getting, trying to get manipulated again and bullied and abused. So you'd have been fearful of anyone that came into your life, especially the ones who were good. Yeah that you'd have questioned everything probably even to this day you'll question everything but yeah. to be then you'd have been probably scared yeah. that she was actually trying to help you help yeah. thank you thank you good one James mm-hmm. oi James and then after Stanford House all the, the Mozart because this is my fondest ever memories living in Mozart mm-hmm. not um, Listen Green and Labrack Grove and because that was where I met all the young burglars and good ones if you like <laughs> I know like yeah. bad now mm-hmm. but you know, back then, the West London lot were a bit more suave and had a bit more swag, if you like, than the rest of the areas. People who might be open to debate, but, you know, we were surrounded by a lot of nice places mm. where you could steal and get decent yeah. money from quite early. But it's scary that Chris Eubank, it shows you he channeled his anger and aggression down the boxing route yeah, and yeah. became one of the greatest boxers. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's in life it's crazy how we channel things and see things differently and where we get our kicks from where we get our adrenaline rushes he was obviously blessed he had a talent and he's used it he probably still got that to this day I think people don't really understand his character he's got a phenomenal story so it's he has deep. Chris it's very deep yeah, and I, 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 I spoke I, to him a couple of times I'm yeah. actually trying to get him on the podcast but him, people yeah. see him as he's like a character he's like yeah. a Disney character yeah, but but when you break all that shit down man he's actually a good guy because I know the guy was it Michael Watson? I think he was boxing yeah. and ended his career. That. But yeah. he does a lot of charity work still, I think, for, for him. To he was day. big for his age, James. Was he? Or oh, unless it was because I was small. And I was getting bullied by some geezer called Morris Lewis. How do you remember their names? Because I, I'm fo- with dates, times, being out, at what prisons I went to, mm-hmm. it's all clocked into my mind. Yeah. Because that's all I've ever done. What happened with the bully? He, he said, leave him alone. And they were head to head. 
he said, leave, leave Sammy alone. And he was sticking up for me and, mm -hmm. you know, it all got stopped and everything. But I remember that bit. And yeah, once I got to Mozart, um, it all started. And I never got nicked though in them few months in Mozart. So oh, I don't know whether I was, a, I was never a good criminal anyway, but no, 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 I wasn't in reality. 50 I wasn't, years in the jail, no, tell you that. No, no, yeah, I'm, I mean. not, I'm not all that, am I? No, no, it was more of a lunatic thing. <laughs> Um, James, but yeah, it started, you know, the dances, wearing the nice shoes and nothing used to fit me. I was too small, but I used to wear everything size bigger mm -hmm. and all that. Everybody had their big change. Not much different from now. You know, they've got all the bling, but back then it was, you know, the, the gold and things and big lumps of it. But, yeah. you know, I was too young. I was scared to wear my things out. I used to get the shirt and hide it under... You know, because you had the, it's not like now you've got a lot of robbers now that want to rob everybody's things and that. Back then you only had one or two mm -hmm. that would be doing that kind of thing. You know, see you with your bracelet and chain and want to take you around a corner and take it off you kind of thing. But um, no, after after um, Mozart State, the social worker come and said, look, you're, you, you've got too much new clothing. They think you've been stealing. We're going to put you in an approved school. So... You know, I ended up in St. Thomas More, West Grinstead, Horsham, Sussex, out the way where, you know, you can't leave. You get weekend leave if you've got a stable home. But obviously, I am always the odd, was always the odd man out. I had nowhere to go, so I had to stay there. And um, you used to have to put your hands up like that. In, like in, a, in a marching kind of way when you're going to work and kind of things in assembly. They used to have a book. They used to come in. They were like brothers or monks, but very serious ones. You get beatings there, James. So they used to stand out in assembly, and the, 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 the senior man or whatever he's, he was, Mr. Glynn, he used to stand there with a book and say, Right, last night you were throwing buttons at blah, blah. You run into that dorm and blah, blah, blah. He said, Can you come up here, please? So if you don't know and you've never been, my first bit, I went up there and he said to me, Yeah, what do you think of that? And when I went to, to reach for that, he went, he slapped me in my face and all, the whole assembly started laughing. You know, like boys do. Mm -hmm. I started crying. It's really embarrassing you. Embarrassing me. And uh, I got a couple of other beatings there anyway. In the end, after 10 months there, now I met some, some, some big criminal names there that were there then. They're still around today from South London. But yeah, I ran away from there. Went to stay at a friend's house probably my earliest friend and started burgling, you know, going to them, the places that looked nicer than us. And after a few weeks, someone got nicked and we all ended up in custody. But um, I am back up in Stamford House and the police came, James, and said, oh, we want you to admit you've been out there doing a spree, that kind of thing. But straight away, they, the, other, the other two said to me, oh yeah, yeah you tell them. So they made it up to me because I was the, I, I know now that I was the most vulnerable one, James, but then I started coughing up and pointing out what I'd done and everything and it was only me and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you go to court, one got, both of them got off and I'm standing there and they saying to me, look, we, we don't want to send you to detention centre. We want you to go back to another children's home. And I stood there and shook my head and I was crying. I said, I'm not going back to a children's home. I want to go to detention centre. So this that time there, I must have been 15 or something like that, James. And they said, you can't, it'd be no good for you. I mean, you've got the laid bench talking to me, telling me that they don't want me to go. And I was saying, no, 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 I want you to go. Because I knew a couple of mates that had done the DC, the short back and sides and march everywhere and came out fitter and stronger. And, you know, I wanted to test myself and be able to tell you that, yeah, I'd done a DC. I'd done a Borstal. So I was doing all that. I'd got the DC and, you know, the first day in there, you know, you, you get slapped about and all they play all kind of tricks on you. And a um, couple of months in there, I'm back on the street. I'm 15, 16. And for the first time, I'm not in, the, in, the, in an institution. So I go back to mums and dads in, in, in my room. But the house was like haunted to me, James. It brought back so many memories from the night. You know, every time I used to walk up them stairs, I used to always think, oh, I yeah. don't want to go there. Didn't like it. I was only out a couple of months then anyway. That would have been 82, 83. I had my first love then. 
Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. was her name? Sylvia. She's passed away now. I know. Yeah, I was talking to her brother the other day. Good stuff he is, Frank. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's when I started a bit of drinking. I didn't really like weed because it used to make me think too much. You smoke solid, hash? No, I tried all that, yeah. but in the early days. So I didn't actually like it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't actually do anything. So during that period in 83, out there burgling for a couple of months, going all over, you know, London and the outskirts and whatnot, I ended up in St. Albans Crown Court in front of Justice Drake. And I couldn't see over the dock, right? I got nicked doing a, doing a judge's house in Rickmansworth. I was with an older guy. He gave me the bucket and sponge and the Boy Scout uniform. I said, look, Sam, just knock on the doors, pretend you want to do car wash, and if they don't answer, I'll go in. Mm-hmm. So I was doing all that, that, that kind of stuff. And then, but the police got called after we knocked the door, come and got us, arrested. And um, I went to St. Albans Crown Court for four burglaries in 1983 when people were getting bossed or 18 months for burglary. I went to St. Albans Crown Court. The social worker went into the box and they were arguing over my body structure at the, the hospital or some psycho saying, look, he's got a body, a bone structure of a eight-year-old or something like that. So he's, he's not developed. Because you remember I hadn't started puberty hmm. by then, James. You know, if we, we'll go into that in a minute and uh, my beliefs on that, why that, it took so long for me to grow. Stress? No, the abuse. Yeah. Yeah, the Just emotional the, shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The puberty stopped the growth, but I'm going to explain that to you in a minute, mm-hmm. big man. And um, yeah, so I'm standing in the courtroom and he, 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 you get, um, I got four years for four drums. I couldn't see over the dock. I, couldn't, I was wondering if I was hearing things. Mm-hmm. My sister was in the dock. <laughs> My sister Jane was in the dock looking upstairs in the gallery, crying her eyes out. And the social worker was the one year we can't do nothing else for him now. Mm-hmm. And off you go, um, straight to Chelmsford. And then, um, Ash- no, Ashford, Chelmsford, and then um, Ellsbury so with the all the young Wales. lifers. Yeah, with all the, the, the young, mm-hmm. you know, the, the baddest youngsters in, you know, in England with their big sentences. But, um, you know, James, you know, looking at that, what I've told you about the abuser, you know, taking me here, there, everywhere. There was one night he took me, he said, oh, I'll take you to a Leeds football match. And obviously I wanted to go, but because it was him saying it, I knew that there must be something behind behind it. So I've ended up going to the Leeds Crystal Palace game, my first ever home game at Ellen Road, right? And Kevin Hurd scored, a screamer. But I was too scared to celebrate. He was sitting right next to me. And then on the way back, he said to me, oh, we've got to stop off at Leicester on the way back. I've got some friends there, so we'll stay there overnight and we'll go in the morning. But when I got to the house, I was, you know, this has been going on a while now, James. So I thought, I don't want to, the lady of the house has come to me and goes, would you like to share a room with, you know, with your, your guardian parent, Joe, kind of thing. And I said to her, no, 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 no. I told her, no, no, no. She goes, oh, okay. Okay, but up to now, I don't know whether they were in on it too. Yeah. Do you see what I mean, James? Mm. But I think back to that, but I got into a, a spare room and then on the way back, he, his behaviour, um, when I look back, obviously. But the effects of that for me, you know, I, I've had no counselling, but I studied myself and obviously I look at the cutting off of emotions, the people pleasing. All right, I was always a bit of a character as a boy, but you know, hard to say no, right? Um, shame and guilt, James. Uh, the effects of pre-puberty, the emotional shock now that I understand, which takes place through fright when you know, you're know you growing. So that could stop, mm-hmm. stunt your growth. I read it in Freud's, one of Freud's things 20 odd years ago, because uh, I was a, a damn Freud and Jung reader in the cat A's and the B's and all that, in the early days when I used to read. So I did myself study and understood what I was feeling, put it all together and kind of blocked it out. Unless, you know, I was living with the trauma and didn't really know and was just fighting. But this was later on in life in the cat A's. But those effects, as well as trust in general, because you had a voice, but no one listened. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? How does that yeah. leave you? Mm-hmm. So I ask you, James English, I asked the public, I think, 
I'm not Einstein or nothing, and I'm a bit mm. thick with certain things. But what would that kind of abuse, what kind of effects as a child would that have in later life? You yeah, know, it's going to have mega impact in your life, mentally, you know, physically, yeah. emotionally. To be cold-hearted, to be have no trust, and that's where you kind of understand the route you went down, the violent route, because you're trying to protect yourself. Yeah, I'm not. I'm so I don't want to be hurt anymore, so I'm just going to fucking give I'll you a bit you. of damage. I'll show you yeah. that I ain't a fucking mug. Yeah, because you know people. He's obviously manipulated you. The people I've on here who have been abused have been manipulated. Yeah. They've been yeah. groomed. It's grooming. Yeah, go to a football match, this and that, and when. People got older, they think, why did I not cry out? Why did I not say something? But the, you did try. Nobody believed you. Everybody else tried. Nobody yeah. believed them. Yeah. So it is difficult, but then in your mind, I've never been abused, but yeah. it's um, you can understand where people get frightened and really they, they try. some people blame themselves, which is a hard thing, but you can't blame yourself for what the shit you went did. through, brother. I did, Fuck's James. sake, man. It's, it's yeah. not you. It's the dirty bastards who were doing I know. that. I Do kind of I mean? felt... You know, I wouldn't approach women as well in my young age. I was shy after that. Uh, as well as the constant reminders, James. He's from Plymouth. Yeah. Someone mentions Plymouth football team. What do I think about? Mm -hmm. You see that ugly boat, the wicked bastard. Yeah. You know, any face that looks similar to it, what do you do? It passes through your mind. You always, but like the trust thing in general, obviously that was the, the main, but I'll tell you what's given me the power to talk in later life because you know it's coming to the end now for me with that bad career and you know the soul I want to make amends because uh, as much as I've never put my hand on a victim outside for money or anything like that I frightened people with a gun and pretended to have bullets and things and then a couple of people have broke down in front of me, James, and I've quickly put it away and broke down myself and yeah, left. Because you know what it's like to be bullied. It's, but it's like I have to see, yeah. be confronted with how somebody's feeling before I go, mm. oh no. Yeah. Without, you know, this is the kind of behaviour that I developed. And I'll tell you what's given me the strength is that obviously always known that I was a bit spiritual, a, a much more deeper man and thoughtful man. Never felt always felt sympathy and empathy and always tried to destroy myself if I hurt somebody that hadn't done anything to me, which a lot of my victims, apart from the first ones, are unknown to me. Do you see what I mean, James? But Joyce Mayer, prime example, right? A speaker, got abused by someone close to her out there every day telling people, you know, and I resonate and relate to her because every line that she talks, I think, well, you, I felt that, and I felt this. It's all walks, not just abuse, but she came through that, mm -hmm. the darkness of the light. I'm inspired by people like that, Pe people like Tyson Fury. So honest, what a great man. Yeah, I love man. his character, yeah, I do, James. Yeah, yeah. He's so his, himself. Yeah. But again, mm -hmm. like me, you go, you drive yourself to the, the darkest pits of despair of and then just to see mm -hmm. how you react to see if you can get yeah, back up it's like something yeah, to do it's a bit of self-sabotage as well it's self-sabotage when you want to do something well if you're doing good you kind of think I don't deserve this so what I'll do is just fuck it all anyway and make an excuse to go and do something I'll stupid yeah. just to yeah, yeah. blame something when really it's all to do yourself he reminds me his behaviour because once he reached the pinnacle of where he wanted to go mm -hmm. He realised a lot of it, the shit around it, all pe fake people and bullshit. all that. He's too deep and honest for that. Yeah. I love the way he says, forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. Mm -hmm. Brilliant man. And again, another role model for me in a different way. He hasn't been abused or nothing. Mm -hmm. But then you have Bernice Catchell. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing lady. I don't know her or nothing like that, but I watch her and things who's come out the dark into the light, who comes out there every day, in full view of everyone, get stick, and they better be careful how they talk to her, James, because she's a good person. And she comes, puts herself on offer. Why? Because she tries to show the injustices that are going on in the world. And she does it because she felt the same way herself, whatever age it was. I haven't gone, gone too into her. She's a bit like Joyce Mayer. But it shows you how they do it you take the power back mm -hmm. and then give it out for the people that don't have a voice and suffer in silence. Definitely. That you're not to feel shame and guilt. 
and I'm that guy yeah, or so gonna be that uh, guy. You're speaking out just now as you taking every bit of power back and people watching us, you you will help people watching oh, us to come forward and I? speak out. Yeah, I'll be happy about that, James. Yeah. And and for me, um, Bernice, even when you say her name, Buenis, Buenis, it makes you feel better. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No, she, she, not just abuse and that, she, she campaigns for all kind of stuff. These are the new people mm. that I look at and feel secure and safe, that I'm safe to come out and... Yeah, and, because it and makes you well. feel you're not alone. I'm not alone. And yeah. that's what I'm telling everybody. You are not alone. Mm -hmm. You won't. I, if anything that I can do to help anyone, I will do. Because everything that I said back then has been brought up in, in today's era. Yeah. And all of it that I told everybody has now been made, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, there was a football agent from Watford. When I saw that Benali case, he got, he was um, a football agent and then you hear that they were trying to groom boys. You, yeah, you come with me and I'll make you a professional footballer and I'll get you this contract and that one and that manipulating young boys. And even, even that, that happened to me as well. They tried another person at a youth club. I remember he says to me, you're magic, you are. He used to manage Alan Devonshire, a footballer for West Ham. But anyway, James, he offered to take, oh, you come down to my country house. And, and I thought, not this again, mm -hmm. as a small boy. Not just that in the children's home. But what I'm saying about the new role models, James, you know, because I haven't spent a lot of time out and because I'm at this stage in life, seeing people that like that, especially females, where it must be more difficult to deal with that kind of trauma, you know, to speak out about those things and feel no shame and guilt, that makes me now feel the same. Yeah. You see, and I've been through so much in them institution, all the wars, all the battles, all the mix-ups and that, we're gonna to get to that mm -hmm. now. But I, you can't beat me. The only person that can beat me is me. Yeah, my own person. And that's how I, that's how yeah. I always, when it's all, it has to be done. Mm -hmm. It was so interesting that I could find ways to do it. So I never gave myself enough credit because I hated myself. Yeah, but you're still here fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're still which here now talking about my it. My making yeah. amends, it, which gets me onto that, um, the other role model side of thing. Um, James, um, recent times, um, you know, before I was a vegetable, I'm somewhere and all the gang shit in jail is going on and I'm watching it firsthand. And you remember, I've got all my old troubles, everyone from the cat, some of them from 20 years ago, are now dropping in to the sea cats later on. So there was a month or two, um, big man where everyone was turning up but my window was opposite the induction wing so I should just spy out the window I said oh fucking hell he's here and all that anyway uh, I had to deal with a couple of things there as well but it was Thursday night it's tea time it's bang up right all associations finished and it's all kicked off I'm on a wing and it's nine against four or five Punching, da, 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 all going on, but three or four of them, good youngsters. I really like them, but I used to lie in my bed and worry about them, James. It was so strange, you know, because I used to lie on my bed and think, he's not going to make it. They think it's going to be like that and like that and reach, you know, but you know, because the youth's age now, sadly, is short as shorter spans of living, not like our era back then. You know, the murders were quite not too, um, like months and years apart one murder you'd hear about, you know, for months, but now it's every day and, and whatnot. But yeah, it all kicked off on that Thursday night and I was a bit slow. I wanted to get involved, but I thought, no, I'll stay in the background. So you got about 80 people on the wing, plus you got the spur next door because in the lower category jails, uh, which I got to do in the later part, um, people can come on, the screws let them on the wing, yeah, go and see your mate over there. So it's all crowded, it's all swinging. And, um, couple of people have hit the deck, but I never had a chance to move. So lo and behold, overnight, they start taking people down the block, right? They've taken all the people that didn't have no beef with each other. You know how stupid they can be, yeah, yeah. right? So they've taken, so in the morning, I'm thinking, oh, everyone's still here. I thought they moved all the, they left all, they left all the ones where all the trouble was. So I've come out, the doors opened, I'm leaning on the railings and I see a couple of geezers 
calling another couple of geezers. Yeah, come, come. So you've got to go around the landing that way while they're coming that way. But on this morning now, I've got my own one particular youngster too that obviously I like and I've got soft spots for. So it's the same old story with me every time I've been in jail. Two daggers in my waistband and, you know, when the door's open, because, you know, the life I've lead, led, um, James, I always have to be ready. Unfortunately, this is the way that, you know, that was normal to me. That's the way, because you don't, you want to be ready mm -hmm. when they come. So that's how I lived for all them years, most of them years. And so they've gone round to meet and they've all met at the same time. And then other people are going, but the two that I'm watching, I've got my eye on. So I'm moving at the same time. So they're in the corner, but they're stuck. But I can see blood coming from down there, James. So I'm looking and I'm thinking everyone's there. There's like a, a railings of inmates just watching all this. Like it's the, the gladiator days in the Roman Empire where everyone's just, no one's stopping nothing, right? This is how it really is in those jails with the youngsters now, uh, uh, Big Ben. So when I saw the cut, I said, nah, because it looked like the bell was going to go and then the little one's going to come out with a cut and I didn't want him to come out. And plus I was thinking, how deep is it and whatnot? But, you know, I'm saddened to tell you that, James, that obviously I pulled out, I've walked over, put the left hand in both of his arms, the geezer that had the weapon because the other guy didn't have the weapon, lifted him up and the whole crowd's watching and I've put one and then it was bending the tool. It wasn't the best one. So while I had him like that, I put that one back in my pocket and pulled out the other one. I got one. A bigger one, James, sadly. And because uh, I was I was hurt and, you know, it's, it's wrong and I'm, I'm, I'm not promoting that kind of stuff. But this is what's happening and I'll get to the message now. So I've done the next one and then the bell's gone and all the screws are running everywhere and and bloody blah, blah blah. This is what they say I did, by the way. You know, this is what they're saying. You know, I'm just telling you the story and it gets deeper. So that's the realities of prison. This is what happens day to day in the local jails and in, you know, jails where they're understaffed, where everybody can run riot and that kind of thing. So I, they said I swerved out the crowd and I just disappeared and, you know, I was the invisible man and got away and everything. But, you know, yeah. And what age were you then? This is recent. Yeah. This is the last... It was that was that, the last bit. That's the last bit, yeah. yeah. But, but anyway, James, the message about this anyway, not the story, it's about the persons that were involved that day or, or around about it that day. And I went back to myself, I thought about it and I thought, look, look at this. You've got to be doing all this to show your enemies, to show people that you're still doing it and that you don't worry, I've got your back, you can always rely on me. You're still doing that kind of thing based on your history and your people pleasing. You've got the youngsters telling you what to do when really you should be telling them what to do. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Samson, you know, you're just playing up to the crowd as usual. You don't care what happens to you. You know, these are really serious things that are going on, but you're making it look like it's just like a day's work in prison. You yeah. know, because a lot of them came with, what, tuna cans in socks that day? And then you're saying, no, 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 tuna and cans in socks ain't doing it. This is how you do it. So as a bad role model, I'm showing them the wrong way. And what happens now? You're getting used a lot in the jail because you were so dangerous. Well, yeah, but I, I don't consider myself, I think I, I, was cons I put myself up for sale because I didn't want to live and I was people pleasing, I wanted stuff and things like that, James. But the thing about it, the message for that, of being a bad role model and, you know, wishing that I could have, uh, could have um, not had that. But when I used to lie there and think about them, them youngsters, it's so strange that the last few weeks, you know, the last couple of months, whatever, the, a couple of them have been gunned down, mm -hmm. you know, like big headlines in the papers and all that. And, you know, I, I, I see, the victims' families on all type, you know, the, the crying and the, 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 the things and all that. And do I lie on my bed and feel guilty about it? Because of what I showed them, because they were showing tuna cans and I was saying, no, you, if you want to be the baddest man on the planet, you've got to do it this way. So people who were fighting that day they, have been shot just yeah, a couple of months ago yeah, outside? Outside, different yeah. incidents. Mm -hmm. 
it's scary, but this is the society we're in. What prison did you do your biggest sentence? The guys. Yeah. What one? Long Larton. How White long did Moore. you do in there? Whitemore, five years. Long Larton, three years. Nine months in, full Sutton block. How long, how many jails you been in? Half the A's, nearly all, two thirds of the B's. And I did the C's early on when I, when, oh, you know, when you, you're a burglar, when you're younger, when I was getting the fours and the threes, mm-hmm. staying out for a month, getting another four. You remember it was two thirds on what you lose remission wise. So yeah. I always used to end up, you know, doing most of my time. Because I know Marvin, who's like, became like a brother Marvin. over the last few months. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've got a lot of big plans together. He speaks very highly of you and he yeah. doesn't speak highly of many people. He doesn't, no, he no. puts it, it straight, yeah. man. He's starting his own podcast and shit. And yeah. I know you've got your documentaries and stuff coming up. Yeah. yeah. No, I love him, but he speaks very highly of you. He says you're the real deal. How, yeah. did, how mm. did that relationship become about? He was, he was, he was younger and he was a family member to one of my best friends, Porky. And I saw him when he was little, younger than me, because he was younger than me, but obviously I disappeared early. And funny, you went, because I didn't know, I didn't, because I forget people, James. Mm -hmm. And then I saw him, he's doing his stuff similar to mine. You know, he's he's changing his life around and um, the change in him is remarkable. Yeah, he's doing amazing, I couldn't couldn't believe it was the same man and all that. But James, this is funny that, you know, because I'll touch on a little... um, a story as well yeah but I didn't see him I kept missing him I saw him once in the 80s or twice and then the early 90s a couple of times but the time when I saw him when it was when he was at his, his peak because you know he as you know he got out he got out of a lot of um, big cases and things you know Marvin he lived that Mm-hmm. That criminal lifestyle out, you know, in 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 world well, the elite, yeah, if you admit, like. Yeah, that he wanted yeah, that life. At yeah, one but point. I didn't get to. You remember, I was a a jail man and mm-hmm. a, a warlord and you know, yeah. a bit of a mug. But that time in Swellside, when he'd had enough, I was doing my own thing then, and he fell out with the two biggest brothers on the wing. Now, obviously, he's like family, and I haven't spent a lot of time with him outside, but I've got to have his back. So. Mm-hmm. He wants to fight. It's all kicked off. And they're saying, all right, the gym, the changing rooms. So I'm saying, all right, this is 94, 95. I said to him, yeah, all right, I'm, I'm coming. He goes, ah, I'll be all right and all that. You know what he's like. But I said, you know what? I can't see him winning this one. I think he, I'm going to have to get involved and, you know, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to end up down a block and shipped out. So, but they've gone in there. The first one took him to the cleaners. No one got a punch in. So... I'm kind of taken back because I knew that he used to box a little, but obviously yeah. I missed how well he got kind of thing. He never landed a punch in him. And then the other ones come. It didn't last as long, but, you know, he wobbled him and then everyone starts. It was embarrassing for them, to be honest, uh, the way that Marvin did that. And obviously I was laughing and I was breathing a bit heavy and the adrenaline were walking back and I'm going, yeah, boy, is that, is that it? Yeah, Marvin, is that it? He goes, oh, come on, yammy man. What, what, what? You know, he was on stuff, wasn't he? But his brother, Barry, I had a, a big relationship with him in the Cat and he is a living legend. About He's the Scouse Yammy. Yeah. We used to team up, you know, for the robberies and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he could have a right row. I mean, he, he you know, he, he fights so much that you, and where he smokes and that people might look down, but, you know, he fought with anyone win, lose or draw, but I saw some great victories from him. And um, funny, James, I've got to tell you this one. Uh, we was in the gym. No, we're on the landing, right? In Whitemore. And it's gym in the evening time. So we used to have a trick, me and him, uh, where he'll take me on the pads, hold them for me and make me look better than what I was, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's doing that, he's doing that. He's got the pads and... Uh, because a few of the dealers are around that side and they're not really fighters, right? Some of them, some of them are, some of them ain't. But it's a trick, one of our, our gameful tricks that we used to play. And I said to him, right, we'll go in there. What's his name's there? Because you know we ain't going to get nothing tonight, but we'll pull this one. Right, so we did this a couple of times and, sc- and got what we needed or whatever, not just uh, drugs and things, other things as well. But on this particular night, We've got called to the gate, he has, I'm standing behind him, and somebody else is saying to him, listen, I don't want him stabbed or nothing, but I want you to do him in, some geezer. 
And of course, Barry said, what you got? What you got? What you got? Then all right, give me some, whatever it is. What, I don't know what it, well, I know what it was, but he, he took that. And obviously I'm, I'm excited. All right, we're going gym now. So we've gone down there. We're doing the trick again with the pads. So the geezer that he's got to do the hit on is there. So I'm going, <laughs> looking like the greatest of all time when really I'm not. <laughs> he just knows what angles and he's good at holding, holding the pads. But it can frighten a few people mm. that don't fight. Um, James. Bang now. He's gone, do you want to have a go to the geezer with the pads? And he's gone, yeah, well, I don't really know how to do it, but can I have a, yeah, I want to have a go. So I've gone, all right, all right. I goes, oh, sweet, mate. And Barry started doing the, he's hitting the pads of the geezer. And Barry's gone, no, 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 take the pads. So he's taking the pads. And um, Barry's gone, look, this is how you do it. Right, left, underneath, blah, blah, blah. But Barry's done one where he's caught him and knocked him out. But you and I know that he'd done it on purpose. Mm -hmm. So he can say the job's done, mm -hmm. but it was an accident. Good one, yeah. really. But these are the things, again, the reality, yeah, the, shirt. the realities yeah. of prison, mm -hmm. all the lifers never getting out, all the bitter and twisted, all the plotting and scheming, you can get done at any time. Yeah. What was your biggest turn you ever done outside? Oh yeah, the print, the, out near opposite the Albert Hall. Yeah, was that a million quid? It's worth? Mm, yeah. So, what? but I sold it all for, bollocks James to be honest it was late at night it was sad I, said, I didn't know you knew about this oh James yeah that was 90 I fucking know everything I know you, you know do what I mean? <laughs> so that was that was um, you know 94 then before I got the 8 and did 6 out of it and come out in 2000 when I got the 12, 13 years but my biggest one was opposite the Albert Hall yeah Saturday night Princess of Jordan or somewhere, Saudi Arabian family, and uh, got into the penthouse apartments, gone into the fire exit uh, where you climb up. All the all the gaffs are belled, obviously. They go round and round and round. Climbed eight floors, light on, put my head through the window. I couldn't hear no one. I've gone in, when I've gone into the bedroom, oh, I've never seen a gaff like this. And uh, safe was open, so, Dinas, dollars, and a tiara, and a matching set, right? Now, watch this now, James. Yeah, excited. Come out, think I'm the bee's knees, the greatest of all time, big emeralds and diamonds. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm in the game, I'm in the game. But I, I was smoking crack them days, and I used to sit in my cousin's house and smoke six, seven hundred pound on my own, in the dark and never come out the room. So when I've got this touch, right, which is how we used to look at things uh, in them, them sad days for everyone, um, I sold piece by piece like an idiot and obviously got ripped off because all I was interested in was doing what I was doing. So I was out three months and then um, they come, a, a handprint or something and then uh, I was in the courtroom and um, they sent a representative down asking for the tiara back. I felt so sad that I couldn't give it back to them, James. He said, look, we'll get this dropped and we'll give you such and such, but it's a family high loom. And they were all sitting in the gallery watching me. Like, you they, know. They were going to drop the charges if you give well, them back? Well, because it was, you're, you're standing in the dock and mm -hmm. you're looking there and you're thinking, who's all that, who, who are them? Mm -hmm. And then the geezer in a suit come down. He, he said, yeah, look, if you... Not about the money so much. Because no. I said, no, no, no. I goes, if I get out, I'll try and get it back for you. But the truth was I got it. I got it broken down. Yeah, and uh, I think, so I ended up with something like, oh, James. I must have ended up with about 60. And that's that it. worth a mole. And they said 1.2. I know. Just shows you what the drugs can do to well, you. It though, shows me just what, to I, get what I really score. cared about. Yeah. I didn't really care about. It yeah. was more getting the prize and showing all them lot. That, yeah, look what I've got. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Raffles, the Pink Panther. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I'm identifying myself with that same old thing from when I was young, the things that I was taught, because I'm of the firm belief when you're a child, it's what you see, what you hear, and what you felt. And if it's not dealt with inside, you know, you don't get to mature and get to, um, uh, to, to understand your child and maturing mm -hmm. and growing up outside. So I'm getting taken away while I'm already... Fucked, if anything. Mm -hmm. So I haven't learned nothing 
about outside life or relationships, all these things that those things now I realise yeah. have an effect on me. Did prison become your home though? Did you become you, so, spent so many years in prison, did you, it might sound weird, but was there some times that you wanted to be caught? I think I always left, the, you know, the, the, someone asked me the other day, but you never got nicked working. And I said, no, I know, I know. They said, you always left things behind. I said, because I didn't really care because I knew that the amounts that I would smoke in them weeks and months I'm out would be enough to kill me if I stayed out a year or so. You, no one smokes like that, James. You don't put 50 pound in a spliff, one king size Rizlan, and sit there and you start hearing voices and all that. Mm -hmm. And then I started to get the gun and sit there and watch the door and see the handle. It's all, that's this all madness because you think, I haven't got no... Um, enemies outside because I a lot most of my my sentences are on my own how long were you on the drugs for I started with that but it was really in jail that I started on the, the brown yeah but I never did the brown outside I didn't like it because mm. the, the, but it's the, only the majority of thing you can get inside yeah the brown. yeah and that's when it that sent me the white sent me off key where that I didn't want to yeah I, and the brown made me right I want to die today. I don't care. I'm getting, you know, that prison thing. And you have a suicide though? Nah. Nah, nah. I've got some paperwork to show you one day though. They ever, you know, because, uh, you know, the bad mouthing thing, James, a lot of people will say, yeah, this is that, he's this, he's that. Well, just to let them all know, I've got all my police records and prison files from every single sentence. If they ever want to get into he said and they said. You've you done know. nearly 40. Would, would you get 46 years and done nearly 40 years inside? In institutions, I've had one Christmas in 37 years and since I was 12, which is how many years? 43. So you've got to see that out of 43, I would have had to have spent 40 or 39, 40 in custody. Sick, yummy. In an institution of some kind. Where does the name Yami come from? Something to do with jammy or something? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That was that. Cause, How the fuck can you be jammy if you're? <laughs> well, in the early days, I was a yeah. When I when the children's home days, the Mozart days, I got that when they came out of a a bar in Port Bella Road, mm -hmm. and I was with a gang of other kids, and a man was counting money in them green fifty pound notes. Them days, and uh, they were saying, "Look, grab that, grab that." But straight on the second, I I dived between the four of them because the money was like that somehow done a leap, grabbed the whole set of notes and the whole street started chasing me. And then I got away. And then the rest of them took the money off me anyway. And, and that's where you got the name? The jam, Sammy to Jammy. And then he's a Jammy Sammy. And then once I started all the greedy bastard in jail, like you want your thing and you want to mm -hmm. do it and you know, nothing's going to stop me. I don't care. I live here. This is my home. It's the same as street which is why I say it was a playground for me, but the message to, to the youth of today mm -hmm. is that that's not the way to do it because the more bad stuff you do, the more skeletons and worries you get when you're older yeah, the because you never get to live in peace. It's only yeah. now that, like, you know, someone's say, saying, I know that I could be murdered over my past, James, but at the same time, I accept that. You know, I accept mm. because it's not the biggest things that have happened where a man feels violent. It could be the smallest thing. Yeah. You never give him his phone card or, you know, you never paid him his canteen or you'd be surprised what yeah. feelings. Some people hold deep feelings over absolute Nothing, things yeah. when you yeah. were the one doing bad things anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, Again, the parasites and all that. Karma's always a, comes into play, but if you can change your life and start doing good, I believe life can get balanced out. It doesn't matter. What, that, that's the beauty of life. And I always say, I always repeat myself when I say this shit, but it is the beauty of life. I've had many men yeah. on this show yeah. who've changed, who thought, who nobody yeah. thought they would ever change. But mm -hmm. there comes a point as well when you do all that bad shit is to pretend that you're you're strong and crazy. But when you actually yeah. admit your past yeah. and grow a conscience and accept yeah. the people you've hurt, the victims, mm. and go, I'm sorry. That shows the courage, that shows strength, that yeah. shows the character that but I was you're willing wrong. to change. How oh. many victims do you think you've had over the years? I got I got quite a name. None of them never done nothing to me. They're not to blame for for me not getting a chance, you know, to have a decent childhood because I always had that that spiritual voice, like if you like, the, the God voice always telling me that you don't like doing drugs, you don't like doing things to people, so you're only going to punish yourself because you know that you're wrong. So it's more the mind because when you're taught when you're younger, if it's only like from there to there to there to there that you've ever gone, 
your brain becomes small, doesn't it? Yeah. You think, well, go there, go there, go there. But now in later life, we know that you can go there and see something different. Yeah. You can like some of the role models or the, the people that I aspire to, you know, that yeah. I get inspiration yeah. off, you know, that kind of thing. There are good people in the world, James. Mm -hmm. I read that story, is it true or not, that you wanted to give five year enemies in one day, five people who you had enemies with and you, you yeah, tried but to target that them all? That, that's not, I wouldn't say that, that if we were talking about um, that day on the yard in High Down, where in fact it was three people, but it was meant to be five, but everybody was in different corners of the yard, James. But it was more of a frenzy, more creepy and sneaky. And then the bell went and I got back in. And then I suppose my greatest fight with the screws was was that day or mm. shortly afterwards where I went hell for leather and realised that hold on a minute yeah I mean you can have a right go when you really want to mm -hmm. you know everything's always within me like when I was a vegetable James I always used to think well, yeah I'm, I'm getting up in a minute what are you talking how were you a vegetable well I fell what off happened? the top I fell off the top bunk bed um, in Wandsworth late at night 40 bed sitting up geezer downstairs below me on crutches Right, so I'm on the top bunk. I got up to go to the toilet. The bed was moving from side to side. I sat on the edge and went head first. And uh, you know, it was all over. There was the blood floor was covered in blood. Um, he rang the bell, and um, I was lying there. And the hospital came, and the ambulance woman, I can remember when I was fading off, James, she was crying. It was her first night on duty. And she said, oh, he can't make that because the gate was closed in Wandsworth. They couldn't get the ambulance out of the out of the thing. But yeah, there's a spinal cord, cervical three and four and four and five. And I was in hospital for five months and all the experts, one from Australia said, look, it's, you've got the same injuries as Superman. Yeah. You've got the exact, and, and you won't be able to walk or use your hands again. What were you thinking at that moment? I did, my did, did, my um, missus came there, obviously harrowing for her to see, and in intensive care, I had the, hor the horrible ones from Wandsworth as well. So funny that it was the ones that I didn't like that were there because um, a week before the injuries, James, I, I had a punch up with them. This is recent times before the injury and I did I punched the um punched the governor in the mouth and all that and they knew, <laughs> they moved me yeah everyone was there he said to me get back to the so they was talking to me like I was a little boy James yeah. and you know when everyone's there you can't do that to me when yeah. everybody's there get your back up because you know what I'm, I'm a crowd you pleaser again. yeah you're better off coming to do me on your own yeah so I'll go all right leave it but if there's a crowd there don't bother trying because mm -hmm. I got I got the set of skills if I if but that I all stems back from being younger and getting embarrassed in front of crowds and mm. slapped is that what it do you think yeah it a million be? percent that's for you when you used to get called out and yeah slapped, it's the only time I performed great when everybody was because there because you feel you're most vulnerable people are laughing at me thank you I never thought about it that way yeah. James oh but um so so what was you talking about? Yeah, that when you got brain damage, you fell off the oh, bed. Yeah, and so I'm in hospital and they're all saying to me, look, I'm saying, listen, I, I just spoke to God because it was late one night after about a week. So I've got the collar on and everything, James. I'm lying there <laughs> in St. <Saint> George's <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, two screws are there. The missus has gone. My first ever relationship. We'll get round to that. And um, I'm looking at the sky and I'm laughing. <laughs> so they said, what are you laughing at? And I said, because I just spoke to, or looked at God or felt God or whatever. And he said to me, I said to him, what well, is that how it ends for me? After all that, the 40 years, to be that, to be dead and buried. And he looked at me, well, not looked at me, but I heard him say, and I heard him, James, they could call me a nut or whatever. Mm. I'm a Christian now. And, you know, I'm, I'm giving my life to God and the cause and, you know, uh, uh, many people that were abuse victims use God's help to, to get them through, you know, these dark times and get to tell their story. But I lied there and I told them. I said, listen, he told me. He said, you got out of everything else, you get out of this one. And I was going, well, well hold on a minute, what are you saying then? But it was almost like that relationship that I've had with him for years, you'd be all right. Do you think that was that wake-up call to give you the kick-up the ass to say, right, I'm going to try and change my life? It's, isn't it crazy that... All the shit you've been through, you've been stabbed. Have you ever been shot? No, I've been in a in a car that was shot that hit somebody else. <laughs> so you've been stabbed. You've yeah, been yeah. in the system for 
nearly 40 years mm, mm, mm. but then you follow it a bump bed and nearly <laughs> die after all that because people be- they, they believe you that story the, the guards and shit or did they think you'd been done they told the whole prison they said there there you are bad man because that thing happened with the governor a week before they were going ah see that's it now paralysed for life never walk again and blah 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 So after people were f- laughing at you well they were laughing but I got a big card though they brought a big card from 100 inmates signed mm-hmm. when they heard that I got back up and they told them nah yeah, I mean, and then they started. When once I got up, because I was doing that, James first. It was a thing where you you, you had to be hoisted out the bed on a machine up there to be put down there. This is going on a few weeks, and I'm lying there, but I was still laughing. My missus was saying, "What are you laughing for?" I said, "Don't worry. It never felt that way to me inside, mm-hmm. James." I, don't, I never thought that I wasn't getting up. And they're saying Superman injury. You know, he didn't, you can't, you know, it's too high up and da 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 and, But, you know, James, I got up and then started acting flash. So I was doing that first, getting up, standing up with it. And then, um, <laughs> but I made sure the bed, I made sure the bed was there so that if I fall, I fall back down onto it. So I, they would go, stop it, stop it, stop it. He was going, stop it, stop it, stop it. Mm-hmm. Yami, yeah, you can't get up. You've got to stay there. And I said, nah, I ain't taking, you got to stand first. Mm-hmm. That's what I was saying. And they were going, oh, because oh, oh. we're on old school. I'm sorry to say as well, James, that, there's been mix up with me and the screws and that for years and years and years. And I don't listen to nothing they say. So while I was in the hospital, I was saying, listen, I was still arguing back while I couldn't move. I goes, I'll be up soon. You watch, you tell me anything, Mm -hmm. watch, I'll be up soon. I was doing all that shit. And then when I got up, two of the nurses I really liked, lovely ladies, I said, look, when they're not looking, I goes, let me stand up and try and do one. And she was going, oh, I'll get into trouble. I'll get into trouble. I said, no, 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 come on, man, do, do one. Then I done one, two, and I said, nah, it's all bullshit. I got, if you do one, two, you got to be able to do three and four, then five or six. So you got the strength, but that shows you your character to be able to do what you set your mind to. And that's the power of the mind. Yeah. You can do Isn't it and it achieve whatever you never, that's crazy. You never knew that all the yeah. stuff that you've been through, you should have actually... What was it like being out for the first time in so many years in hospital? Were you ever thinking about escaping? Nah. Nah, because I was in there five or getting months. somebody to escape you if you're nah, fucking... No, they thought, they, they're always paranoid of me. Like when we got to Stanmore, James, right? Because they, I've got history mm-hmm. for having affairs with staff. You know, it's happened a couple of times over the years, and uh, you know that you're the big man, James. You say to me, "Yeah, I mean, you can get into him, get into him, and see." Because I'm always that guy. Yeah, do you want to be? They, I'll go up front for everyone. So I'm that kind of middleman as well. So my name gets called in a lot of things, but really, I never got nothing out of it. I just put you two together. And you bring it in for him. Mm-hmm. So I was good at that. So my history says so. And they were weary of me, the screws in ones. And they're all young ones now. And I know some of the old ones and they, they're all right, really. But the young ones, and to, some of them I couldn't really. And I was saying, listen, shut up and did it. So once I got walking, walking a few steps after eight weeks, nine weeks, but I could, still couldn't move my hands. I still couldn't move my hands. I still couldn't move my hands. And... Um, so, um, James, the, that started to come a little bit after. Mm-hmm. So that would have been about 10 weeks, 11 weeks, 12. Once I got to Stanmore and then they said, oh, you can't go and sit in the, the room with the other um, spinal patients because I was in a ward full of spinal patients. Then I got my own one. But all the ward, the ward I was in, everybody had lesser injuries than me, but no one got up. So I started to think, well, hold on a minute. You're, you're a bit lucky, eh? Really, considering the serious, the seriousness of the life-changing injuries and all that, but you know, showing off, James, the usual yammy one would we'll walk into the gym to the physio thing. And were you taking gear before you went? And, nah, uh, no, before it happened nah, injury. Nah. so you were getting yourself clean anyway. Yeah, I was. I, I was Did you have a lab date? Did you have any, a date to get out? Or anything? No, because I was on a recall on the the last eight, which I did. Mm-hmm. I've done seven out of really. Yeah, so you had a year left. I had no when the injury happened I had two years left mm-hmm. so I'm on a recall where you got for hearings every and you know when I was on my deathbed I had a hearing and they said no James <laughs> they wouldn't let me out <laughs> my missus got the MP yeah. from mm-hmm. down by I'll, I'll tell you mm-hmm. her name good good lady in a wheelchair as well um, I forgot her name she's an um, Asian lady lovely lady and 
she come, she said, listen, you, you, you got to let him out. What do you mean you're not going to let? So they left me there. So when I got up anyway in Stanmore, I started to give the bop. I can't really feel my feet on the floor. Mm -hmm. I haven't got sensation everywhere, as you would expect. But when I'm walking to the physio room, you have to go a long way around there. I'm talking to all the, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, the screws don't really like it. Because yeah. you know that if you're liked and you like people and you want the best for them, you know, people, some people are going to shine to you. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna, you're going to shine back. Yeah. And then they're going to stick up for me when they're trying to do... Because it, it kicked off in the hospital one night, um, um, James... Isn't it weird? They said, oh, you have to not use the, the general phone at the desk. You have to start using the, the screw watcher's mm -hmm. mobile phone. I said, what? I said, why is that? And I goes, all right, then let me use it now because I've got to phone my missus. So he says, no, no, I've got to wait for orders and blah, blah, blah. James, I could barely stand and all that. And I picked up the chair and went like that with the cuffs on to figure and all the nurses the ladies the one, all the ones I get on with they run in and uh, I went like that and I was moving around the side of the bed to come around that way because he's sitting there with his and I'm walking I'm lifting it and you know because he was it felt like he was bullying me and taking a piss out of me being disabled some of the stuff he said yeah. I thought you know what I ain't having it so I picked up the chair and, and came around the side and all the ladies yeah Sammy no no as soon as I saw them I didn't want him to see that side of me, you mm -hmm. see. Yeah. And uh, I sat down and they said they heard what he, and they, they, they knew. But anyway, you, you go back to Wandsworth, mm -hmm. you're in cuffs. Oh, I felt gutted to go back after that. <laughs> it was like being out, mm -hmm. you know, socialised because I'd never been in a hospital before. That would have been the longest you've been out in what, 35 it was, years, 40 it was years? Mad, isn't it? Mad, mm -hmm. isn't it? And, uh, but I'd only ever been in hospital twice before. Once when I got knocked over in the children's on by a van, and I went all the way up in the air and fell on the floor on Marleybone Road, but I didn't have no injuries. And the other time, uh, when I got stabbed in Swellside, when the whole yard, when they rushed me at uh, labour change and I was protecting someone else and I picked up two there and I had someone in my arms and got one there and then I dropped him and then got one there. But, you know, I got done that day because I never had a weapon. It was after that that I started using weapons and forgetting about the knockout punches and all that. Because you got a Queen's Pardon as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. How, yeah. So how did that come about? The Queen's Pardon was... Did you save a guard? No, 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 no. It was a woman probation officer yeah, called, called Carol Ballardi. Mm -hmm. She used to work in an office outside, right, in London. But in the old days, in the 80s, they used to come in once a week or whatever to do the job in Wandsworth. So my girlfriend at that time with my son was pregnant, right? The baby was just, just my son was just born. And um, they put a note under the door saying, you got to go camp hill in the morning on the ferry and blah, 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 blah. So I'm lying here. This is 1989 March, right? And I'm lying there thinking, James, nah, that's too far for visits. I don't want to go there. So in the morning, because you only get two days notice before they just come. Wandsworth was dangerous them days as well. You get the shit kicked out of you. That, what it is now in Wandsworth was nothing back then with the old lot and the old mentality of, of the um, screws. But... So I've worked out a plan because when you apply, you've got to make an application to see the probation officer and that can take a week or two. So I'm thinking, no way, I'll be on the ferry by then. Mm -hmm. So I've gone on the yard exercise where you're all round in single file with your blue jackets on them days. Come back to the wing. I said, nah, she's in today. So I, when they were banging up everyone, because you have to get banged up in ones with them days, no one's left out apart from cleaners and whatnot. But I've disappeared onto the ones, sat on the toilet with my feet up, with my head down, so the bits covering my thing like that. So they've looked and ring and not looked over. You always know they're not going to look over. They're looking for the feet and whatever. You know, one of the institutional tricks, James. And then um, I've gone upstairs. I see the line was that way. The probation rooms that way. So they're not facing the door. They're all in the queue waiting to be asked to go in. So what I did was push right to the front of the queue um, to get chatting to her. And without looking in, I opened the door. When I opened the door, there was a man, a foreign looking man with uh, an article in his hand, with his hand around her throat. And 
doing walking backwards like he was coming around the table to come out of whatever he was going to do. I didn't have time to think, and he was bigger than me at that time. I weren't that that strong as I am now. Mm -hmm. Then, so I didn't know. The only thing I could do, again, a, a female, I I've gone running in there. So he's. I ended up getting a little small scratch, nothing much, but we ended up rolling over the table. She ran out the room and pressed the bell. Never seen as many screws as this in my whole life, James. About a hundred. All the whole wing was covered in uniforms, right? Come. Uh, I somehow end up on top of him by luck. So I, I don't know how that happened, but, you know, I was lucky. So I was on top of him. So they pulled me off him. So they pulled me in the corner, got him in the corner. They're talking to the woman, uh, the lady. And... Um, She's saying, trying to say, but obviously she's in shock. She can't talk properly. So they've wrapped him up, right? So then they're coming for me and, oh. <laughs> they think you're a part oh. of that. Mm -hmm. So they're bending up. I go, Gov, no, it ain't me. I ain't done nothing. He's going, yeah, put your head down. You know what I mean? And bend my wrist, put my head down. But as I'm walking past, I can see the lady's legs. And, uh, you know, sad. She had tears in her eyes. So sad, James. And uh, she come and said to Mr. Baker, he's dead now. He used to, he was a proper bad one, but, but I rated him though as a screw. He used to come in and search you on his own in Wandsworth in the old days. He used to come through the door on his own, everybody freeze. He had that, that, that energy what made people scared. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a bunch of serious convicts run from a, a screw, but he's there talking to her and then he's looking at me. I'm saying, hold on. So, so I'm standing up now and then she's come and, and then he's gone, right, hold on, let him go. And then brought me around. He goes, oh. He goes, you're my hero, Yami. He goes, I'll get you. I goes, no, 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 no. Don't involve my name in anything. So, do, 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 do. I'm proud about the comebacks. You know, I looked at her, went upstairs. And then he gave me a job on the hot plate. And he said, you're everyone that went past. See, I got slagged off for that back then. Because they said that, you know, I got him. I stopped doing it. They started to grasp me off for that. But... But James, you know, nah, man, that, that woman could have been killed uh, or raped or something. You know, but did that I bring did, a lot of memories back yeah. from your mum being beaten up or it's getting it's stuff? Funny that, isn't it? When it affects, it does yeah. do that to me even now. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing a lady cry. Yeah. It does my head in, mm -hmm. um, James. But she, so he's brought me on the hot plate. He said, "You get an extra fish today." I thought, "Oh yeah." <laughs> Downsview were just open, and it was a male's prison. And he goes, "Right, Mr. Turner, they used to call him Mr. Angry." In the mornings when the bell used to go, he used to go, unlock the bastards. It's proper, proper different mm -hmm. in the old days, James. I've gone to Downsview, doing a three and a half year stretch. Gone to Downsview, doing a three and a half year stretch. And with about nine months left, two geezers in a suit came with a certificate with the writing on it called Royal Warrant. And my mum gave it to my mum. She stuck it on the wall. And I got 200 and 75 days back off my EDR, earliest date of release, not parole, right? Because I never ever got parole off, off, any, off any sentence, right? 270 something days, um, raw warrant, and to come off your thing for a heroic tax. That's unbelievable. I got that. Yeah. And I, so at least, you know that- Did that, you get time off your sentence? That was it, the 270 Two months, days. days. Yeah, just yeah. under a year. Yeah. Yeah, so I got let out like next week. Mm -hmm. So we had nine months left or something. I only had a week left and I went out and I was clean. I run a marathon, a, ban a wheelchair marathon for Banstead with the wheelchair sponsor. I did that. I went to college for the first time in life for six weeks and then 1990, out six weeks. Got upset in, um, in the cafeteria during the college course. Went to Knightsbridge with a briefcase in my hand and got nicked. I'd knocked on a door, you know, five Bannum locks and um, no one was in. But I took off the door with my feet. I took it off, Bannum had a good run up and took it off. It took me nearly 40 minutes to take it off. And when I got disturbed by the poor lady, she come through the door. I tried to show her my college pass and tell her I was Israeli intelligence and she hit me with the handbag. But, you know, I legged it down the stairs, mm. didn't do nothing to her. But she went to the window and shouted out a builder. And a builder come running down the road and Sloan Street, James, he said, oh, are you? And da, 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 da. But I was pretty nifty and rapid. Yeah. Uh, knocked him to the floor, jumped on a bus. 
I jumped on a bus, but it was a bus mm -hmm. that was going back to the depot with no one on it. And when it turned the corner, two plainclothes police in football scarves said, excuse me, sir, can you come off the bus, please? Something's going on. You just hit a builder. And then I got nicked for that. And then I was away. Then I started to take drugs in jail. Around about that time. So, so the eight years prior to that, I wasn't really a smoker. Was that an Omnipin? No, no, no. It was a, someone said to me one day, your energy's too high, Yami. You need to, you need to cool down. And where I didn't used to do puff, I mm -hmm. thought, well, let me have a go. But it turned me into a yeah. raving lunatic. What kind of people? Because I know we'll touch on No Razor Smith, who's been on the show, who's Razor a great Smith. guy. Oh, Love I him. haven't seen that. I didn't, yeah. I haven't, oh, I haven't heard Love, about no. him. Um, Notorious bank robber apparently yeah. has done over 200 banks. Mm, guy mm. changed his life in prison. Oh, I know him, James. Great stuff. Yeah. I know James Razor Smith. I've been in about. I've been in the Cates with him, Whitemore, Parkers, Albany, High Down, Belmarsh. I've been everywhere in Razor Smith. <laughs> Do you know it's funny, yeah. right? Brain boxes, very intelligent. Yeah, man, clever James. man. Yeah, a proper light raiser. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not the kind of man you want to mess about with. Yeah, don't fuck he about. He don't really. Yeah. You can't. He's one of them ones you can't really approach him. But me and him had a good. He used to laugh at the things I did. Mm -hmm. He used to say, yeah, you fucking, you know, he was in church one day and I robbed someone in the back room. You know, he was saying, you're a proper, you're a lunatic, mate. And then one day he come to me, he said to me, we was in Belmarsh, I'll never forget it. Because I was with him in the Cays and he used to, he was a writer from back then. He was already on that, that path and that. I saw him in Whitemore in later years when I got that big one. And, you know, something sad happened uh, and I never saw him again after that. Uh, but I did light rays. I was a good hearted man, man. And one time in Belmarsh, he said to me, he come out and he said to me, he said, yeah, me come here. And I said, yeah, yeah. I said, we say him race. He goes, can, I've got some cards here. Can you get some and certain things for me? I said to him, yeah, 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 I'll do that. And when he put the cards in my hand, he went like that. And he held onto my hand and he went, yummy. Yeah, you're not going to do me over, are you? <laughs> I said, I said, Ray, he's like, look how long, I'm not going to do that to you, like kind of thing. He goes, all right, all right. But he was laughing. Mm -hmm. He knew that he probably, but he felt the need to say it. And obviously I brought back his, yeah. Ray's is one of the ones that I brought back your yeah. things for. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I well, liked Ray. Yeah, he's a, a good, diamond good, man. man. He's, he's out of it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's out, I was he's reading yeah. the newspapers in there and he's all that. He's doing well. Yeah, what about Bronson? So, you're yeah. Charlie Bronson? Yeah, yeah, I spent, I spent time. What was he like? I liked him as well, to be honest. James, very intelligent man, not what they say. I spent, you know, two months in Whitemore down there, but he asked for me the other day. I've just wrote him. Oh, good. Posted a letter, yeah, yeah, because he, he, he phoned a thing and messaged me and I got something off him, but someone someone the other day. But um, I've had to write write to him as well. But I spent time in the SEGS a couple of times. My, my memory's a bit jaded, but one of them I was with him for two months and calling me out the window. And he used to always be on me to do my training and say, Yami, don't, you don't need it, and blah, blah, blah. I saw some of his drawings, sound advice, not a big ego geezer, not a bully, a man that, you know, just for, the, for his own cause, you know, was probably belittled by them at a certain time in life, James, and fought back. Mm -hmm. And he's done it that way for years. You know, I would have had him as the, the strongest, the, the baddest man physically, you know, because they, I can say there's a lot of bad men that have... Uh, if we're talking about that kind of stuff that I used to look up to, which I don't know more, um, you know, what they did outside and inside. But really, in reality, the physical thing, one on one with Charlie, I, I can't really. I've met some tough, tough geezers. And even some of the people that I've mentioned by way of interviewing other, you know, because I, I knew them more and saw a lot more from them and whatever. But I've seen, like you said, they're quiet. There's some quiet, quiet. Bad men. Oh yeah, it's the quiet ones you've got to they watch. It's the ones who I know quiet guys who just sit in a pub. Nobody knows who their name, but they are mm. proper, mm. proper men. Mm. They don't do their. They just do their thing and keep yeah. quiet. Yeah. But yeah, that's in life is life. Good stuff. Yeah. The good stuff. That right. I'm glad you mentioned him. You know. Yeah. I like it. He's bought. He's a big name. I've mean, read one of the yeah, books. I think in... he's getting out. Maybe a year or two. They're saying he might be getting out, Charlie. Oh, that's Charlie. No, but I'm talking about Razor. Oh before. no, Razor. Yeah, Smith. Charlie. No, Charlie might be out next year. Yeah. He might be. That'd be good. They asked me the other day. Would mm -hmm. they? I think. I think he would manage. Mm -hmm. What do you? What do you think back now, looking at your life and spending so much time in prison? How do you see it? I honestly look at myself as a social shaman. 
I see it more that whatever suited me and whoever was there, I pretend to like them. Well, not pretend, I love them or be like them. All different kind of Kangs, James. All different walks of life. I just basically acted in a way that I thought that everybody, but in doing that, lost my identity. Because mm-hmm. I was always a sad, deep man. You know, all the, some of the bad stuff that I've talked about in other podcasts and all that sickens me makes me think that you know it was always when something was on offer that I would you know that I would do something crazy and then they'd all talk about it yeah yeah he's a nutter he he done this and done that but really it's like a defense mechanism you know I I I think it was a shield to say well but then I'm loved a lot as well James of course yeah I'm loved quite a lot by a lot of villains I got a lot of squeezes because there's other people you know that that, you know if you're talking about the hierarchy of Mm -hmm. you know like the Marvin Herberts the Terry Adamses you know all the the other big bigger names that you've probably heard about you know I I had little um, respect off those kind of people and um, even with um, Terry Adams you know he used to always well he was in the cat A's in, in recent times and I met him through someone else I didn't know him I think I knew one of the brothers from the early days and he used to always say look he betted on me once with a powerlifting I said yeah I'm gonna... he goes bet today I said I'm not on nothing so bet I'm going to win so because I was just the lightest so mm-hmm. he bet one of, you know whatever his currency whatever it was because you know he does his little thing sound sound you never know what he's thinking serious serious man um, Terry but good bloke but um James, isn't it funny that um, he once said to me, shall I bet today? This is like six months later. And I went, nah, I'm on the gear again, forget it. And he goes, ah, he goes, see? He goes, but I like you, yeah, me. It was funny, during that time, that that cat A's, now that I think about it back then, uh, they used to have these parties, like ooch parties, um, James, and... um, you know, it takes a few days, you've got the start on and you've got to yeah. hide it somewhere and you've got to have it. But on this Saturday, right, I don't think I've told many people this, but there's people that obviously was dead and that know about this. But we was talking about it this morning, me and my manager laughing. But I said, I know I'm a proper mug, mate. But, but it was Saturday, everyone was looking forward to it, right? Black and white, this one. You know, all the heavy mob there. And what makes me laugh is they all say hello now and again. But they don't really like each other. You know, they don't hold conversations. A lot of the, the big the big ones, yeah, you're right, sweet, I keep it moving. It's not like me, James, who gets into relationships with everyone so that when there's ever, ever any problem, I start feeling the pain for everyone because I like you and I like you and I like you. You know, and then you've got to think, well, when it all kicks off with all of them, what are you going to do? And that's happened a couple of times. And I've had to hide behind a curtain like that, mm-hmm. looking. So, um, on your head at each party, so it was Saturday, right? There was a bent screw on that day, right? He never liked me, but I didn't know he was bent. So he's always going, get back to yourself and all, just one, James. There's always one. And I say, shut your mouth. You're a mug, you're a muppet. Don't talk to me. And da, 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 da. This went on for years like this, James. And um, so the party's coming. I've got the guest list. So I'm the one who another big man gives me the paper and I've got to go Saturday morning. Nah, there's only 15, 20 spaces for two cells, right? And everybody thinking, oh yeah, what? I'm friendly with everyone. What, didn't you get me in, Yami? You know what I mean? I'm saying, no, you're not on the list. I don't want to say he don't like you or whatever, but you know, I've had to, and then L tells walk past and yeah, I'm, what am I, I'm coming in, I? I went, yeah, 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 you'll be there, right? So Saturday's come, a lot of disappointed people. We've all gone in there and, uh, the drink started because weekends is earlier bang up and you got to bang up by 4.35. So it's 1.30. So over lunch, everyone's getting ready, dressed and all that because there's MDNA and there's Ooch James. So we've gone in there. First, it's the soul, the old soul. And we're all having a little duddy. Ooch was making me drunk that day, James. And then I've swallowed a little bit of magic. <laughs> For the first time in life, I've never, ever done it. They said, put it in a Rizla and... Half of the group, not LTL, he didn't touch nothing, right? So I've swallowed that, and after everyone's loving each other, even all the ones that don't get on, they're <laughs> yeah, all hugging is, and yeah. kissing, and you're all right, and he's all right. Yeah, don't worry about that, it was nothing. And everybody's letting their guard down. When the music started to get higher and higher with the garage and all that, LTL looked at me, and I, I was having um, 
I had to see a healthcare nurse once a week. She was like a psychotherapist, right? So once a week, and I, you know, when you're in prison for years, you're not getting no visits or nothing. I'm not in contact with the outside world because that's how I used to do it, shut away. And you kind of get, you know, you get dreamy looking at certain females. Oh, I love her, I do. She's really nice. and did it. But you know it's in your mind. You make sense of it and all that. But on this day, James, they're all dancing and everything. LTL's gone, Roy, that's enough for me, I'm at. And all that. But he could hear what they were all saying to me. They were saying to me, I said, listen, I've got to go at four because I got an appointment with the healthcare nurse. They've gone, yeah, but she loves you. Anyone could tell that she loves you and you, you're mad. I'll get her to bring stuff in. And all. I ain't never going to make a lady do anything bad for me. But I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. But obviously I'm getting higher and higher. So now I'm gassed now because I know four o'clock's coming. They said, you should make a move. You, she likes you, man. And I remember I'm thinking about a couple of affairs. I've been lucky that way before in the past in prison and all that, giving it all that. So I've come out buzzing. Chest high, boom, walk into the gate. Yeah, Yami, you got an appointment. Boom, Saturday afternoon. So Eltel was at the gate. He went like that to me. He said, don't listen to all that bollocks, Yami. Don't get in. And I goes, no, 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 no. What did I go and do? I went down there, James. I sat opposite her. I was buzzing out my nut and I looked at her and she looked at me. We cracked a joke about something, but like the fool I am, I leaned over and tried to kiss her on the cheek. <laughs> so <laughs> when I did that, she stood up and went, Yabby, what are you doing? I went, oh, oh sorry. They pressed the bell, James. <laughs> <laughs> and wrapped me up. Uh, fucking hell. Wrapped um, me up, down the block, stripping all buzzed up and all that, down uh, there, twisted up and all that. So I'm down there and you know how prison is? Mm. Oh, for effing hell's sake. And I remember that one the other day. And in the morning, they knew that it obviously it ain't nothing. Mm. And re 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 I was drunk and all that. They let me back on the wing and everyone was going, what happened? We heard it. Mm. I said, no, 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 it wasn't that. Mm. It was there. And they said, yeah, but you're mad, you know? After about the gas and, and I apologise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The same yeah. old yummy. So see, when you look at all that, yeah. obviously you've went through what you've went through. You spoke yeah. about the abuse, which yeah. Are, yeah. is amazing to, mm. to speak mm. out. Um, mm. 46 years in the jail, not done nearly 40. Yeah, yeah. But now that you're out, yeah. you're clean, you're sober, you're yeah. thinking differently, you're looking for inspiration, you're yeah. going to become an inspiration I've, yeah, yourself. Yeah, I've got it, I've got What's it. your plans for the future, brother? Well, we got the, um, it is what it is TV. Obviously, I said big shout to Where my, can people get this? On YouTube. YouTube. It is what it is TV. We'll leave the James. links in the description for people to subscribe. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is TV. Uh, Samson B Facebook, um, Sam7 Instagram, and it is what it is TV, um, Instagram as well, but obviously the main one is it is what it is TV and the kind of things that are coming um, very shortly are podcast talks, sports, entertainment, and um, some more radio plays. By want to get a book out? My book's halfway done now. Documentaries, been, films. Yeah, I've got, I've got, got enough. We got a, we mm. got a film called Kirk for you. We think you're like that, James, as mm. it goes. And I've got the play, the real life one from the last bit where I was taking notes in. Um, Wandsworth that's going to be done and that'll be next year but the book I've been so slow with everything my concentration I, you know I've been dying I've been dying to get this out of the way and see you big man yeah. you know I watched a couple of your things and mm -hmm. I, I, I was really you know I get I get I like it feels hurtful to talk about painful stuff mm -hmm. James but at the end of the day I'm getting used to it and with those inspiration as I've told you about and you know I, I you know I cry with for some of them more than myself really because I know that a lot of my stuff was self-inflicted but you know the channel is coming Good. and any subjects talks or podcasts we've got some we'll have remember I know a lot of big names uh, yeah, as well yeah. they haven't done interviews yeah. yet but um they'll come they'll come for yammy I look forward to that but um basically it's that plus the um my writing I'm, I'm narrating as well my reading but uh, you know to i'm starting doing my talks to the kids online and mm -hmm. in a couple of schools i've been doing that and they i've been having offers since i come out people messaging me saying this one that one come to me i've got a few couple in australia james that want if it wasn't for this they want me over there in a plane to give me a house mm -hmm. to come and give the powerful talks over there so I'm, I'm, I'm enlightening myself, studying, yeah. reading, get refreshing my brain. Yeah. The future's looking clear. bright. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. But I was so relaxed mm -hmm. and so cool. I'm up at the crack of dawn, swinging down yeah. the high road at five. But really, there's complications mm -hmm. as well as being murdered for my past, James. I could be this is this injury as much as good as I look. Of it, course, brother. But there's you can something walk outside that, and get hot with a bus. You can yeah. fall off a bump. Bit. But I'm saying the yeah. condition is my yeah. condition. Getting up was a miracle, mm -hmm. but there's still complications. Yeah, and it's a possibility that yeah. I could actually. You know, if it, if yeah, something but you're goes right, wrong, and I don't think that's going to happen for yeah. anybody that's watching who thinks they're a bad man or wants to be a no. bad man. Yeah, for somebody who's lived it like yourself, yeah. what advice would you give for them? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that the more bad things you do, the more in later life you're you're gonna suffer because when you reach a certain age, you're gonna realize that if you're thinking of just doing it for a sense of belonging and whatever to better yourself, there's no real success stories in any of it. You know, all the people that I kind of idolise in later life now, I realise I idolise good people. And how easy that would have that been for me? That the people I'm finding now, I want to be like them and, and, and be the way that my spirit tells me. Not go with that, that bit of me that says, oh, he uh, living in those conditions, the way that I'm taught and thinking that that's the right, that's life. Because in fact, not a lot of people reach my stage, as you as you well know, James. And a lot of them youngsters are sadly are dying early, and they go to prison. And when you reach the cafes, it is not easy. You have to. They, everyone, certain people come on here and say, "Oh, I I sailed through the cafes." You never sailed through nothing. You mm. never sailed through nothing. If you never fought, if you never fought or got in the mix, uh, and never felt nothing, then you never was involved. And that's the way I see it, James. Yeah. And it's a frightening experience. You know, it's only because I'm institutionally taught that I know I, I, I know the truth and I know that it's all a lie and that the easier solutions are do it the right way. It might take longer and you might not see your goals straight away and the results, but the same consistency and persistency that you're putting in to go up there, because what they do is they tell you to be like me. You have to do this, do that, but they're not telling you that a lot of them die along before they can even reach the stage they're at and that they're just going to get you to do it like they got me to do it, you know, because you want to be seen around them because they've got the name and you, got, you want the, to be part of it and all that. But what does it all mean in the end? What does it all mean? You do a bit of bird, you know him, you know him, you know him. But what about you and how you really feel? Because there's a lot of lonely people out there. There's a lot of people that we grow up and the conditions at home are not, not really that good. You know, I, I, there's many abuse victims that don't go on to commit crime and, and, and take, it, you know, take it out on the public. They haven't done anything for you. They're not to blame for your life. You know, you, you, my, my, my journey for my soul, James, is to make amends and give back. I don't want nothing in return, which is the altruism. Yes. And that's me. I don't want nothing. You know, other people, you know, with me and that, they want, but I do everything for nothing. James. Love it, Yami. Listen, brother, love, love coming you, on today and yeah. telling your story. I yes, appreciate it. Man. I can't wait to see the rest of your journey, mate. Yeah, I'm, man. I'm buzzing for yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you, brother. Yeah, I'm really happy, James. Thank you. Thank you, big man. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.